In this video, we will learn about deterministic finite automaton and non-deterministic finite automaton. We will write their definition, we will understand their definition, we will do their examples and we will also compare them. So let's start. So here is the definition of deterministic finite automaton also known as DFA. Deterministic finite automaton is five tuple number one sigma is a finite set of input symbols. Now to make this definition clear, I'm gonna do example and also I'm going to explain mathematically as well as graphically. So the example that I'm going to follow for this definition is that we have to make the DFA for a machine that accepts zeros and ones, but the number of zeros must be multiple of three. That means this machine will accept this language. The strings accepted by this machine is called its language. So the language of this machine, say M, is that it can accept empty string because number of zeros equals to zero is a multiple of three. It will accept three zeros. It will accept six zeros and so on. And it will accept any number of ones. So these three zeros could have a one here or a one here. These six zeros could have a one here and so on. So this language accepts uh, zeros which are multiple of threes, any number of ones. So that's our language. We have to make an automata for that language. And we have to explain this definition using this example. Sigma, which is a finite set of input symbols. So for this example, my Sigma has two input symbols that is 0 and 1, a finite set of states. Graphically, a state is represented by a circle. And for this example, I will have three states. I will show that why we have three states later on. So our set Q in this case has three states which are Q0, Q1, and Q2. So these are the states of our DFA for this example. That one of those states must be the start state from where our machine starts. Usually we keep Q0 as the start state. So in this case, Q0 is my start state. But star state can have any name. It could be Q1, Q2 or anything. So my star state is Q0. Graphically, I show star state by a circle and an incoming arrow to that circle. This incoming arrow must have no source. It is representing the start of my machine. Also, each state has its name inside it. So in this case, because my start state is Q0, therefore inside it will be Q0. A set of final states. This set must be non-empty. That means at least one state must be a final state. And uh, we could have more than one final state. In our case, for this example, we have Q0 also as a final state. So this is not unusual that our start state and final state are the same. Now the final state is represented by two circles. So this is our final state. Finally, we must have a transition function. The transition function takes two inputs. It takes input uh, state and an input symbol and then it outputs another state. So transition, transition function 
takes input a state say q1 for example and it will take input an input symbol for for example 0 and then it will output another state for example q2 now let's create our dfa and then we will discuss transition function in more detail so for this example i have three states q0 q1 and q2 q0 is my start state and also q0 is my final state so this two circles represent that it is a final state this arrow represents that it is a start state now my machine accepts empty string therefore my start state and my uh, final state are the same if i get a one then i can stay at this state but if i get a zero then I must accept three zeros or multiple of three zeros. Therefore, for a zero, I go to state Q1. If I get a one, I stay at that state. And if I get a zero, because still the number of zeros are only one, I need three zeros for acceptance. So I move to the next state. If I get a 1 then I stay at q2 and now if I get a 0 then that is my third 0 I can accept them for my third 0 I go back to the final state so this machine will accept empty string it will accept three zeros if I do this circle once it will accept six zeros if I go in this loop twice it will accept n times three zeros if i go in this loop n times now here we must clarify what we mean by acceptance so what we mean by this machine accepts so there are three rules number one we start processing our input by going in this machine from the start state so we must begin from the start state so begin from start state number two we must consume our input completely so consume complete input and rule number three is we must end at a final state we must end at a final state Let's know what these rules mean with an example. In this example, my input is 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. And I have to see if my input is accepted by this machine or not. To that end, I begin at the start state. That means Q0. Now I take this input 1 and I go to the next state for input 1 we remains at the start state so for input 1 I remain at q0 and my input 1 is consumed so I am consuming my input from left to right for input 0 I am once again at the st start state I go to q1 so at input 0 i go to q1 and my input 0 is consumed 
Now for this zero, I go to Q2. So on this zero, I go to Q2 and this zero is consumed. Now on this one, I stay at Q2. So for one, I stay at Q2. This one is consumed. Finally, on this last zero, I move to Q0. On zero, I move to Q0. And I have consumed my input completely. So let's see if my string is accept or not. I begin at the start state. Yes, true. I have consumed my input completely. Yes, true. And I end at the final state. And yes, I end at the final state. So this string is accepted. If my string didn't have three zeros, it has two zeros, then I have used the same steps, but then I would not have ended at the final state. I might have ended at Q1 or Q2. And so that string would have rejected. Now, instead of creating a diagram, we can create a transition table. This graphical diagram captures the definition of DFA graphically, but transition table is more useful for use in a program. Let's see what is a transition table. The rows of transition tables are our states. For this example, because I have three states, so I will have three rows, Q0, Q1, and Q2. The columns of my table are the input symbols. So this is my column one for input symbol zero and this is my column two for input symbol one. Now this table represents my transition function. My transition function takes two inputs. One is state and one is input symbol and it gives me another state. So the body of this table has output of the transition function. So let's see if I have input Q0 and 0. That means I'm a state Q0 and read the input symbol 0. I will go to state Q1. So I write here Q1. If I'm a state Q0 and read the input symbol 1, I stay at Q0. If I'm a state Q1, I read the input symbol 0, I go to Q2. If I'm a state Q1, I read the input symbol 1, I stay at state Q1. If I am state Q2, I read the input symbol 0, I move to Q0. Otherwise, I stay at Q2. So this is my transition table. Usually, with transition table, you also need to know that what is your start state or final state. So, people add special symbols with the start state and the final state. For with the start state, they sometimes add an arrow. This arrow represents that Q0 is my start state. And with the final state, they add a star sign. This represents that Q0 is also my final state. So given a transition table, I can create this diagram. Given this diagram, I can create transition table. Now, let me clear the board. And then we will learn that what is non-deterministic finite automata and how it is different from deterministic finite automata and which one is better.